three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome to another phenomenal, powerful episode on Ready, Set, Real Estate. You know, as I get my music going, it may or may not come on, but I have a wonderful beautiful, amazing guests to share this platform with me today. Fatina Brown. I love saying her name, by the way. Fatina. I just can <laughs> see her name. Fatina. Fatina. <laughs> Fatina Brown. She's VP of Brown Conglomerates and Holding. And we've connected here locally in the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area where her organization is doing amazing things. And Fatina, I did say to her, we were gonna open with music, but today I am running the show from a new computer. And so as I'm going through my learning curve of just getting music started, it may or may not happen, Fatina. <laughs> but it's, it's perfectly fine, let me see. It looks like it's gonna come on. I just want to give our listening audience a moment to get settled, get prepared for just an amazing dialogue and discussion about how real estate can make a social impact. And as we know, we are in a time and era where the housing crisis is a very real, real situation. And it is impacting every day of our lives. And I don't know what the statistics are, but I'm sure we know of a family or friend who is homeless and is being impacted by a current housing crisis. And we're learning, we're going to learn more today about what Fatina is doing through her, through her organization. And let's see here. I definitely want to make sure, it looks like we're not going to have music. I'm just going to be a sad face today. I'm just going to be so sad today that we're not going to have music. Let's see here. Um, but it's all good. I'm working this out. I'm working the kinks out. So welcome. Hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you. You are on Ready, Set, Real Estate. Be sure to grab a Ready, Set, Real Estate swag. You know, I try to make sure to show all the colors to you and to make sure that uh, you check our website out at readysetrealestate.tv. Our shirt, tons of uh, swag. I call it our Ready, Set, Real Estate swag. And it is available again at readysetrealestate.tv. And again, the show supports our nonprofit, one of our favorite nonprofits, Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation. Fatina, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you on this beautiful, lovely day? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You see how you see why I'm enamored with Fatina? She is so personable. And I just, you know, in connecting with her and learning more about what she does, I said, I would love to have you on the show to talk about it. And so, Fatina, if you would just fill us in, bring us into your world, who, what, where, who you are, uh, tell us about your organization, where you're based, and let's just dive in into just what, what we talked about offline and as I'm sharing with our guests today, just social impact is really what resonates with me with what you guys are doing. Yeah, so... Um... 
It all started, I would say, because so my father um, does real estate, like investing and flipping homes and, you know, renting out. And in the past years, it's really come to light um, the homeless about the homeless population, how high it is mm -hmm. in L.A. City. There's about thirty one thousand people that are homeless right now. Wow. And we're like, well, how can we get involved in this with what we do? Because we're in housing. So um, what we did is we said, OK, you know what? We're going to make our mission to be cleaning up the city. Um, we're going to obtain vacant properties and we're going to house people that are homeless, veterans, seniors, low income, you know, because these are the people that are falling under this category of homelessness and even right. mental health. Um, mm -hmm. So what we, we've done that and what we do is um, we're funded through government and nonprofit agencies that give their clients basically a subsidy to go and find housing. And wow. what we like to do is provide them a sober and clean environment and that they can use our space to kind of get themselves back on their feet. Um, you know, settle any problems that they're currently dealing with, just to have that peace of mind and feel that safety. So um, I like, it. I like yeah. it, and it's it's fairly very timely. And let me say this because I am a walking billboard. I I wear, and I know you've seen me a lot wearing various colors of the Ready Set Real Estate shirt. And yes. a lot of people will approach me and say, oh, you're in real estate. And yesterday I actually came across a woman and her children. And she said to me, oh, you're in real estate. And she said, well, I'm I'm finding difficulty finding um, places that accept my program. I thought she was I asked her if she was on a Section 8 housing. She said, no, she's on a specific homeless program. And I was like. How synchronistic is this? I'm connected to Fatina. So she she's going to connect with me. I'm going to connect her with you. But I'm so happy that I can now do that because in my realm of business, it's in sales, right? So I'm not coming across people that, um, that are typically not ready to buy or maybe in, in that situation, but also my spirit being what it is i don't want to turn people away so i love that i'm connected with you to to be an anchor through you and offer those services and so i think it's a great win 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 with what you you guys are doing and it's really commendable that you dad and your team actually are seeing a way through use what you were doing as a business to say hey we can actually be a solution, a solution, not to, not the solution. And I know people get kind of overwhelmed when we're talking about solutions, but just a solution and doing your part. So I'm going to cheer you on. Thank <laughs> and you. And give you. <laughs> yeah, you guys, that that's really awesome. And this is why I said I would love to have you on the show to talk more about that. One of the things that I just hear you mention was a safe environment um, and sober uh, living and tell me a little bit more about kind of are there certain requirements to being part of uh, experiencing the shared housing how does it work how does how does eligibility um, how do they qualify so um what they do is think there's agencies that will provide subsidy provide people with subsidies. So there's St. Joseph, um, PATH, and a big agency is Hopix. Um, so they go and they fill out the paperwork there and show that they've been chronically homeless. And once they've been allotted their subsidy or their stipend uh, for housing, then they people can branch out and find, well, who will accept this from this agency? So they can come to us, right? when they come to us we say hey you know what we do here is shared housing we rent rooms to you you can have the option of a private room or you can have the option of a shared room and you know we'll provide pay for utilities we'll provide you with cable and wi-fi the house will come fully furnished 
um, kitchen, all of that. So you basically just need to come and move in. Um, the screening process that we do personally is we do it as if they were regular tenants. They would complete um, an application. It's free of charge. And on the application, we would call their references. Um, sometimes people don't have references because they have been chronically homeless for a long time, but we don't turn them away because of that. Um, so then after that, you know, I do let them know we have shared housing rules because you will be in an environment with other people that are coming from different backgrounds. So some people can come from domestic violence, um, substance oh. abuse, and things like that. So in the shared housing rules that we provide, it's basically a lay down so that any, any crossing of those problems can be eliminated. So we market our housing as sober living because we want to encourage people to come into our environment free of drugs and alcohol, you know, yeah. so that these things are not having an impact on the stability of your life. Um, so, and, and you know, it doesn't always work out perfectly. People don't always go by the rules, but we work with them. You know what I mean? I, it's important to, because sometimes people need that support. And that's another realm that we're branching out into is not just shared housing, but permanent shared supportive housing, because that's what people need is support. Um, so that's something that we've been working on and, you know, trying to get counselors or, you know, different programs involved that maybe when people move into our housing, we can set them up in a program that will give them a job immediately. So, um, right. Right. you know, so we really do try to keep an environment that is, safe, um, where they can develop, you know, develop, continue to develop and, and have a good quality of life. Cause that's what it's about, right? A good quality of life and not feel that you're being isolated or that you can't do something because, well, I don't have anywhere to shower. I don't have, you know, so, mm -hmm. and also along with that, being in shared housing with other people, you have a family because you have housemates. So it also provides yeah. that family environment for them and it allows them to interact with other people and, you know, get back into that and, you know, how to cohabitate, I should say. Is that <laughs> the correct yeah, word? Exactly. <laughs> right, get back into, right, uh, civilian. I think feeling more hu human, right, humane, because, you exactly. know, when, we, when you have a space and a place to call your own. I I like that you're saying you get to kind of be reconnected again and have that opportunity foundation to do that. And I'm like, I, I really love that you're saying support because when you're talking about people who have been feeling ostracized um, and disconnected, and it's so funny because it's not funny as in funny, but I'm just saying just the synchronistic and the in having these conversations, my son asked me last night, are you born into homelessness? Because he was present when the woman mentioned about being homeless. Mm -hmm. However, she did not appear as what we see homeless, right? Typically in the street. Exactly. And I think that's interesting because homelessness has, it does, you know, it knows no race, color, creed type of thing, religion, right? It is one of those things that I talk about real estate transcends all isms and when we're talking about housing it's something that we all need yeah amazing yeah it's definitely something that we all need and like you said it has no face there is no image of what a homeless person looks like a person can mm. be dressed to the nine but they're going couch to couch you know they don't they they don't know where they're going to sleep at night and so that's one mm -hmm. thing that i think we have to realize is that the person sitting next to you in the movie theater can be homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you don't, you do not know. And I think because right. what we think is homeless is someone who's dirty and living on the street. That's just the worst of the cases of homeless. Right. That's, you know, you right. know, so 
Um, You're right. And I, I want to expand on that, especially just time, just to kind of really paint this picture, because um, I have been in part of uh, community organizations where, uh, you know, I've been an advocate in the support for those in the homeless uh, community and those organizations that support the homeless population. And one of the things that came up in a dialogue to paint that picture of a homeless person does no, we, has no image. And one thing that came up is a young man that actually, um, like you said, dressed to the nine, right? Um, and had a gym membership because why he was using the 24 hour, the gym membership for, for showers, right? For that to go and take a shower to and brush his common. And, and take care of his hygiene. And you just said it's common. And these are things that we are looking beyond. Um, we, we're looking on the surface and not really digging deeper. And I think checking with each other just in a, in a sense of offering that sense of well-being, like, you know, extending, how are you? What's, you know, what's the circumstance? Because when we see people pop off and there's aggression and they're upset, we're not oftentimes realizing that, like you said, the people next to us that is also wanting to experience life just like everyone else. And I want to watch a movie. But when this movie ends, I actually may have to be on the bus um, until the route ends just to have shelter. And I've been that. I've been there. I've been on the bus routes where I used to commute on bus. And I saw that a lot where they would ride to the end of the line just to have some place to be. Um, Wow. Do you find and it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk to me. I'm listening. I was going to say, and even um, I've also had clients that because they've been so used to um, being chronically homeless in the streets, that once they've moved into our housing, they have a hard time staying in the housing and would sometimes rather sleep in the streets. Mm. So there's so many different. So there's a psychological right conditioning in terms of survival and just exactly. and I've seen I've seen that as well. I know we've attempted to help some folks that was homeless. And you're right, there was a preference to just be out on the street because it's been such a conditioned way of life that now being in a home setting is just really a, a shock to the uh, to the mindset, I guess. Um, so I think absolutely resources are important. Um, are you finding, is it easy to get resources? Are you finding some challenges with getting connected with programs for the individual or is it twofold? The individual has to be ready to, to accept so, it and- So what's interesting is that because, you know, there's, there's all this talk about homeless people and there's all these programs and if you and, and then you have landlords who are willing to open their home. You have people like us who've you know gotten a little more housing to offer, and it is still kind of difficult because I'll go to meetings and I'll say, "Hey, we provide housing," and sometimes people won't call me, and I'm like, "Okay, you know, it's weird. It's well." And then I'll meet people on the street and they'll say, "Well, I'm with Hopix, and they they won't find me any housing," or I'm with saying, you know, I'm with this program and they won't find me housing. And I say, well, you know, who's your caseworker? Let me talk to them. Let me see what's going on. Let me see, you know, how I can help you when I do come across um, people who are in the system to get housing, but, you know, they're not being offered anything. So there are some barriers um, to finding people and also, um, for people to know that we are here. Um, that you're aware. That you're well, that, here, you know, right. that play, um, spot our service planning area, service planning area six. And um, I mean, there are barriers for us to finding people to house. And there's also, I would say, a barrier in that what we can provide, you know, mm -hmm. as as a as a small family doing this, um, because there are a lot of families that are homeless, and right now are only able to do individuals. So you know, there are barriers 
that, you know, sometimes make us not suitable for families, you know, when they need us. And that's oh. when it comes into play to meeting other people who are involved in this. And I can say, hey, we'll call this person because I know that they do, uh, you know, women with children or they do, you know, so there are barriers in like that. And it feels bad when you have to say to someone, oh, well, I, I don't have anything available for you. So, right. Um, and that's specifically, right, specifically when you say for you, you're saying specifically for that person's family size, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, that, that's also, gosh, you know, and it's, it, you know, it, it, this made me think of, there's a proposal happening, I believe in the, I think it's Maryland area, where there's a concept or an investor who wants to take the ships, the abandoned ships, and basically create a online, a floating hotel and housing for the homeless. Wow, and that would be amazing. That would be amazing. So the, the pro proposal has gone out and I'm definitely following that story because it definitely, we're in a space where we're, everyone is looking at, everyone knows the saying that they're not, there is no more land, right? They're not making any more land. And right. so as we are in the Los Angeles and the metropolitan, the greater Los Angeles area, we are seeing our developments going up, right? Yes. And that's because we yes. need more units and so while our units are going up, you know, that becomes for a lot of our demographic, right? We are the millennials currently and, and our, um, those who will follow, which is the centennials, which is going to be a hundred and something million. We're currently at 92 million. So enough of us had enough of them. <laughs> and so housing is gonna be so important for us, but right now we're still dealing with people who are right now don't have housing and can't, afford it on in comparison to those who, of us who are working and whatnot so it'll be interesting to see the mindset expand to now offshore and i think it's a great idea um for something like that because as you're sharing with me you can only do so much you can only house individuals currently and i'd love that you are a solution and that's i'm bringing it back to that a solution and for someone who may be tuning in and listening um, and everyone has, um, you know, they're into buying and flipping. And one of the things with real estate is a buy and hold strategy. And you are utilizing uh, government contracts, nonprofit agencies who are collect collecting subsidies and stipends from these individuals. And I've seen it. They get max. I don't know what, what, your, um, what the base is, but from what I've seen for these programs, uh, sometimes you're getting above rental current market rate uh, for these to house these individuals. Are you seeing that? Is that something that also, aside from tax credits to these organizations as a benefit? Um, <clears throat> can you repeat the last part of that question? Yeah, I, well, yeah in, sum, in summary, I was just thinking for someone who wants to do something, wants to have housing, right, has units, um, and what would what would be a great incentive to them to want to create at least maybe use one of their units for housing for shared housing? Um, well, an incentive is if you have a house or you have rooms available and and you're and it's just sitting there, then and you're you're kind of you're not making any money on it, you're just paying a mortgage then why not do where you can benefit financially and someone else can benefit by having somewhere else to live. So mm -hmm. there's the um, Watts labor. It's the, uh, let me just get the name of it. <laughs> it's the, Watts, the Watts labor community action committee. And what they do is they have a landlord's meeting every month where if someone is interested in renting out their house or um, a vacant lot, or I believe the new things uh, that people are doing are ADUs. Right. And, and if they want information on that, they can attend these meetings and connect with people like us who've been doing it or landlords who are 
um, just starting out, as well as agencies and case workers from these agencies to connect together and start um, collaborating. So it can be done on any scale. Even if you are in a two bedroom house and you just want to rent one bedroom out, you can do that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like that you said, I like that you brought up ADUs because um, I did a post about this and I just wanted to be, I just wanted to let people know or be mindful because it's kind of taken a whole different spin. And I just want to address this here on the platform. And since we're talking about housing the homeless, but the ADUs was our uh, county's uh, initiative our state's initiative to house the homeless. And it's interesting that it's now being proposed and presented to now do Airbnbs. And oh. so I just, want to, I just want people to be reminded, especially in the real estate community, um, as we are talking about ADUs and we are presenting people with the option for those. And let me just explain this for people who are listening. Uh, so ADUs are the accessory dwelling units that actually was approved to be built on properties that are zoned for one unit, meaning one single family home. If your property was zoned, is zoned for R1, typically it's an R1 uh, zoning, meaning one unit, you can now do a conversion and build a mother-in-law suite or ADU, also known as an accessory dwelling unit. Minimum square footage is about, I believe, 600 to maximum 1,200 square feet on a lot. And you don't require carport or parking if you're 50 feet from public transportation. So I say that to say, to remind the real estate community that as we are selling these properties and we're advocating to our clients about the possibilities of ADUs, also be sensitive and mindful that this was actually an initiative to house the homeless. <laughs> and, 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 and these agencies, um, one of the brilliant corners, they'll offer you an incentive, a holding incentive uh, for your ADU. You know, if you, they'll, hold, they'll pay you to hold it until they get one of their clients in it, one of their homeless clients. So, I mean, they are really making efforts for it to be used to house homeless people. So I would encourage people to do that instead of Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's a tricky thing because I think one of the things um, that pointed out, that you pointed out is just kind of, sober living, safe space environment, and making sure you're connected with resources. And there are great organizations out there. I've been part of the meetings um, and you can definitely connect with me and or Fatina. I will give her an opportunity to drop her connect, her contact number so that you can get connected with her and learn more. Cause I'm sure she has a plethora of resources for this, but there was one meeting that I've attended of, and learned of an organization that will also help. So they pre-screen um, they do help, uh, they will actually pay you too while your ADU is being renovated. Like you said, they will, there are organizations that will hold, they'll pay you to hold that space um, for their clients. And so they also, if it doesn't work out, and we all know that um, sometimes things come to an end, things don't work out, meaning if you now have to evict that, that tenant, uh, this organization will also, will help you with that and will pay you for any, a rental income lost during that eviction process. So that, that's the other side of real estate most people don't talk about. We talk about cash flow, but when things don't work out, then no one's talking about the challenges um, and stress sometimes that comes with trying to evict someone and, and remove them properly out of the, legally out of the property. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that there are organizations that will also help you, pay you and be um, an extension for you especially when we're taking on something like this, right? Homelessness and you're dealing with psychological, emotional, um, uh, just a lot of um, sometimes trauma and experiences that that individual is coming with. So want to make sure you're supported. Fatima, what would be the best form of contact? You hear me say your name. I just, I love saying your name. <laughs> yes. 
So I can, I'm going to give my phone number. Uh, my phone number, anyone can give me a call if you have any questions. It's 213-282-8236. Do not hesitate to call me, leave me a voicemail or send me a text message. Um, also, my email is my first name, fatina.brown at gmail.com. So you can also email me, you know, reach out to me. I'm here to answer any questions. Um, for anyone that's interested in getting uh, involved now, there's going to be a landlord breakfast meeting January 30th. Uh, that's going to, oh, wait, excuse me. That is old. Sorry. Just give me a call and I'll give you the information for the new meeting. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So one more time, let's, um, let's just go ahead. I just want to put it on the screen for those of, for those who are listening, give the number again. And for those who are viewing, and I want, I do want to just share one of our listeners um, who is a uh, former, who is a vet um, did mention about, I just want to share his, con his comment shortly, but Fatima, what's the number again? 213-282-8236. Great. So to contact Fatima, be sure to connect with her. 213-282-8236. And I'm going to go ahead and pop populate that there. And Hassan Rodriguez, thank you for your service. Um, I'm reading your comment here. He says, I served 10 years in the military, U.S. Army and U.S. Navy and became homeless. He makes a point and he adds, he says, it's very important to, to rehab, rehabilitate the individuals and then put them in their own housing. He says it would be a win-win for the homeowner and the client or soon-to-be tenant. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that we were talking about earlier is making sure that there are resources to support that person's well-being. Uh, because again, as I said, psychologically, socially, emotionally, uh, people are coming with their own traumas. And like you said, when they are now in the, ho the house environment, sometimes it's too overwhelming, right? Because there's already, there's already been a preconditioning of the street life per se, or just a sort of constant survival mode. And so thank you, Hassan, again, for your service and sharing that. Absolutely appreciate your comment. For those of you who are tuning and listening on the uh, radio podcast replay, we'd love to hear your feedback. Be sure to send me an email, drop me a comment on any of the social networks. I'm at LA Super Agent. Fatina, it has just been a joy. I will see you probably, what, tomorrow, I think. I know we've got yes. some networking <laughs> events. So um, just to just kind of shout out uh, our local real estate board, Southwest. Los Angeles Association of Realtors, Fatina Brown and myself, we are committee members of the Young Professional Network. And one of the things that I, it brings me a joy to show your, your beautiful shining face, your passion, your service to the community is primarily because we're both millennials. And we are, I feel uh, the reason I have this platform is to counter all the negative that is being said about our generation of not caring, being YOLO, not doing anything. And here you are, we have our young, I think you look like you're in your twenties. I'm in my thirties <laughs> and we are very vested in our community. We're passionate. Um, we're providing service and being a resource and doing our part. So Fatina, I will say publicly, thank you. I love you for that. And thank, thank you. you for time blocking for me and being part of the show. And I just, uh, you already know I, I'm you just you're just awesome. <laughs> you're awesome though. You're awesome. <laughs> so as we get ready to wrap it up, um, are there any last comments um, that you would like to leave with our listening and beauty viewing audience? Again, just wanted to shout out those who are listening on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, Breaker, Anchor FM, all the radio podcasts everywhere. Thank you for our listening audience i know mobile university is huge and you guys are listening to the radio podcast when you can so thank you for your downloads thank you thank you thank you fatina yeah i just want to say um you know it's important to have these conversations with people and if you are talking to someone and they're experiencing homeless find out what what they're doing find out you know 
how you can help them. Uh, give them my phone number, but do take accountability. We have to start doing things on individual levels to upbring our community. Absolutely. I love that. Well said, you guys. I never figured out my music, so I'll probably throw it in afterwards. <laughs> we can it dance as if we have it going. <laughs> hey, we're going to yeah, exactly. um, so I, I can figure it out on this new laptop, um, but it's okay. I think we had just some fantastic information we got to share. And again, if you're tuning in for the first time, do know that our platform, our show supports our nonprofit, realestate100youth.org. And this is the invaluable information we're bringing to the youth, young adult community, and people worldwide is bringing people like Fatina Brown. Again, she's VP of Brown Conglomerates and Holding. And what they do is provide shared housing for the homeless. And she brings a plethora of resources and connections. So if you missed it, any of the information, You've got me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, at LA Super Agent. Just get connected and say, hey, the young, beautiful sister you had on the show, I need her info, and I'll get you connected. <laughs> Fatina, thank you so much again, and uh, we'll check you guys out on next week's episode of Ready, Set, Real Estate. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>